Ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you very much for having me. My name is Jan Toschka, and as you just heard, I'm the managing director of Shell's retail business in Dach, so that's Germany, Austria, and Switzerland. Just to put things in perspective, one or two sentences about what we do. Um, we are running two and a half thousand retail sites. These are gas stations, pump stations, tankstellen. And uh, on those two and a half thousand retail sites, only in these three countries, 25,000 people work and serve one up to one and a half million customers every day. And apart from selling coffee and chocolate bars and snacks and foods and beverages and everything, we are also selling a lot of fuel. In fact, billions of liters every year. And there are benefits to it because it gives us the size to make differences, but also there is downside to it because these billion liters of fuel, they obviously hold a lot of CO2. And in particular, when burned, the CO2 comes to the atmosphere. Now, that is probably the toughest and biggest challenge we are currently facing, climate change. And let's not make any mistakes. I'm not talking about a commercial challenge, not for us, not for us as a company. I'm talking about the environmental challenge. And that challenge only gets bigger because with growing population, with growing demand for mobility, yeah, this CO2 challenge we need to face, we need to face fast. Otherwise, we will see damages which we potentially can't make unhappen, undo in the future. It has never been easier, it has never been cheaper, never been safer to transport people or goods, products from A to B using a car, using a truck. So therefore, this is a very, very serious challenge. If we don't do anything, this will not go away. We need to deal with this in a commercially as well as technically feasible manner. And that gets me to what we will be doing in Germany. Just to put things one more time in perspective, as Shell is the company, you may believe this or not, you may have heard about this or not, we have, as one of the, amongst the first companies supporting the Paris Climate Agreement, and uh, also we just recently announced that we will become a net zero emission company by 2050 or earlier, by simply taking CO2 out of the production processes ourselves, by taking CO2 to a large extent out of the products we are producing and selling, and also if there are unavoidable uh, CO2 uh, emissions in the products, we are helping our customers to store, to capture, or to offset those. And that in totality makes us net zero emission by 2050 or earlier. Just one more point before I zoom into mobility and transportation in Germany. Um, I brought a couple of numbers and I want to talk you through specifically what we're doing there. In case you ask yourself, what, what is this guy talking about and how can he talk like this and at the same time work for an energy company, let me be very clear, I'd love to do what I'm doing because with a team and in that company, we are so determined, we are so committed to make a difference that I'd rather be there where we can become part of the solution instead of remaining part of the problem. Now, let's zoom into the German mobility market. As I said, it's growing, it's big. We have, take a guess, how many of the cars we are currently seeing in the portfolio, in the fleet, in the country, having a combustion, a traditional combustion engine? And since this is not a dialogue, I'm telling you, it's 99%. So one car out of 100 is either having electric, battery, or hydrogen, or something else. But 99 out of 100 still having an industrial combustion engine using diesel or benzene, gasoline, or gas oil. And just one, two more figures. Yeah? The car average, the, the, the age of that fleet is 10 years. So from brand new up to 20 years old, it's 10 years. And we are talking about a size of the fleet of 48 million cars. So that's roughly 50 million. I, I'm sure these numbers tell you clearly how big the current situation is, how much fuel, how much, how much diesel is consumed. Now, you could argue, well, this is going to get away because more over time, you know, more people will buy electric vehicles and hydrogen cars and everything. Absolutely, yes. The truth is, however, despite significant corona stimuli from governments, the percentage of new car registered today as we sit here in Berlin is still a single-digit number. It's less than 10%. So if you do the math, it will take years, it will take decades before the current fleet is replaced and only clean vehicles are on the road. Now, do we have that time? Probably not. Let me tell you what 
an immediate kind of a reflex very often is when, when I talk to people, stakeholders, NGOs, public. The reflex very often is let's think about extreme solutions. What about you know, taking all the cars away and replace them by electric vehicles? Well, if you want to do that overnight, we would be talking 50 million cars times whatever the price of such a car is, an electric car. Um, that would probably be the same size of the German GDP that bill, right? So that makes it very unrealistic that that's going to happen overnight. 10 years, maybe. 20 years, certainly, but not overnight. The other extreme I'm very often getting from uh, speeches is, uh, why don't we ban oil altogether? Now, oil is a commodity. It's a global product. There is plenty of it available. There is plenty of refining capacity. So if you just take one or two or three companies out, that wouldn't help because other people would come in and would you know, be actually very happy about this. You would need to make it global, and that would make this world overnight not the same world we are currently living in. I'm not saying it's not going to happen in a longer, longer, longer time frame, but it's completely unrealistic to claim this overnight. That's not going to bring the short-term change. So the question is, what does bring the short-term change? We thought about this really hard, and we look at the, the emissions we are producing, the products we are selling, actually producing. And we decided we need to, we need to offer such attractive alternatives, cleaner choices for our customers, so that customers actually change their demand patterns. And we have uh, developed a three-step, kind of three pillars. Yeah, we need to structure it. Large company, usually I would have brought slides. And we want to structure it in, firstly, it's to avoid, to reduce, and to compensate. Now, what does avoid mean? Ideally, we avoid CO2 from the very beginning of the production process, when we produce the energy through the distribution into the car and also when it's used. We have electric vehicles, we have hydrogen, I'll talk about this, and we have biogas. So what have we done? In 2017, we bought New Motion. And New Motion is a company, you get a card like this, and you get access, or you have an app, obviously, but I usually run out of battery in my phone. You have access to 125,000, 125,000 charging points all over Europe, 35 countries, of which 20,000 are in Germany, Austria, and Switzerland. You could theoretically say there is plenty, plenty of supply if I want to drive electric. There is, no, there is no shortage. You can do that. Interestingly, we don't see many people doing it. As I said earlier, the number is still small. We then invested in uh, another joint venture, Ionity, to bring in super fast charging on highways. Because the belief is people are hesitating to buy electric vehicles because you don't really know whether you can get a long distance. So we invested in, those, um, in the Ionity joint venture. Um, not much has changed. It's good stuff, but not seriously. We don't see a breakthrough in terms of electric mobility. And then we decided uh, yeah, one and a half years ago, we also need to offer super fast charging elsewhere on retail sites. These are our pump stations, but also at shopping centers and elsewhere. So we are now investing in hundreds of these charging stations per year. Out of each comes two cable, 150 kilowatt installed capacity. And we are truly convinced that this will bring us closer to an acceptance that electric mobility is very convenient. Because within minutes, you can charge another 100 kilometer distance. Within 10 minutes, 15 minutes, you can easily charge 200 kilometer distance. And that is what we believe needs to be done in order to overcome the, the belief that electric mobility is, is, is not as convenient as the traditional combustion engine. That clearly falls under avoiding of CO2. At the same time, we've also invested in the H2 Mobility joint venture. We have, as we stand here today, on 30 of our retail sites in Germany, we have hydrogen. And uh, very, very soon, there's going to be 40 sites. The truth is, similar to electric charging, we are at least one, if not two steps ahead of the customers, ahead of the demand. So we are offering these molecules, but then there are not many hydrogen cars. That is, that is very unfortunate. We truly believe this will change as well. I just want to let you know this is another proof point where we want to make a difference. Now, for the truck segment, heavy-duty trucks, a lot of CO2 is emitted in that segment. We have just announced that we will be building a liquefied natural gas network, 40 sites where heavy-duty trucks can fill up LNG, so that's liquefied natural gas. It has 20% less CO2 than the conventional diesel. You may say that's not good enough. I would say I agree. So therefore, we are also building in a 
a liquefier capacity in one of our refineries, we will be buying agricultural waste and we'll turn that into biomethane, liquefy biomethane, bring it into the retail sites, and we have 100% CO2-free mobility for heavy-duty trucks. That measure alone takes out 1 million tonnes of CO2 per year. So that all falls under the bucket of avoiding CO2 altogether. The second bucket, the second pillar, I called reducing. We just invented a new diesel uh, which has 33% bio-component, second-generation bio-component. It's called R33. We're testing it with Deutsche Bahn, Robert Bosch, known names, well-known names. Uh, we will bring it to the market. It will reduce the CO2 emission by 20% in comparison to regular diesel. We also have a range of, of gas-based fuel, and we will be bringing, before we have biomethane, we will be having standard LNG for the trucks, which also has like 10%, 20% less CO2. So also in the reduced bucket, we are seriously committed and spend a lot of money, a lot of time, a lot of effort in, in, in making a difference. But ladies and gentlemen, if you have listened carefully in the very beginning, you would now say, Jan, you said it yourself, it's only a few hundred thousand, maybe a million, maybe two million, maybe three million cars in the near future using electricity or hydrogen. The vast majority still is with combustion engines, and you're right. And this is why we said we can't, we can't look the other way yeah, and just feel good about those uh, charging sites. We said we want to offer, that's our clear ambition, we want to offer a cleaner choice, a cleaner offer for every single customer. And therefore, as in, uh, what is it, four or five weeks from now, <clears throat> beginning of October, we will be launching our Shell CO2 Ausgleich. That's the Shell CO2 compensation program. Every single customer, regardless of the age of the car, the model of the car, whether it's diesel, whether it's benzene, it doesn't really matter. Every single customer, he or she, can decide to compensate for the amount of fuel just bought. So therefore, every single customer can make a difference and manage his or her own footprint individually. This is going to be super simple. The customer only pays, if he or she decides to do so, only pays for the CO2 emission from using the actual product. If the customer decides to do so, we as a company, we will pay for the CO2 um, produced by producing the product, the oil, refining process, distribution up to the retail site. So in totality, that liter is getting offset completely and it becomes CO2 neutral on a net, on a net balance. That program, we do believe, allows us to say we need to work together with customers. It's nothing, I mean, we can offer as much as we like. We need to make it attractive for customers to believe in this and to actually really make, wanting to make a difference. As I said earlier, this is uh, coming in a couple of weeks' time and we believe this is pretty unique. I have uh, recently met a number of people, NGOs included, uh, political parties. We are all very excited because we see that this is the very first time a company like us we are doing it. We are doing it in um, UK as well as in the Netherlands. It is very positive received, but it's still, as, as everything you know in these days, it needs some time to grow. Overall, that was the bit of zooming into the German mobility, and I hope I've made clear that we are investing billions in our ambition to become a clean company. I could have brought a friend, also working in the same company, not surprising, uh, who would have told you about building electrolyzers, so having green hydrogen production ourselves up and running. I was mentioning the biomethane production. We're having more things uh, coming up in the next couple of weeks and months we will announce. We are very serious and very committed about this. I'll leave it here. If you, if you find it, uh, let, me, let me be very humble, if you do find it exciting slash interesting, what I'm telling you, um, your company might be small, might be big, it doesn't matter, come to me, I, I would love to talk to you, as long as your, your passion, your energy for making a change is as big as ours. Thank you very much.